What if someone gave you irrefutable proof of the person responsible for all the evils that have befallen you? And if with that proof, it gave you a briefcase with a gun and a hundred untraceable bullets, guaranteed, as soon as those bullets were found, all police investigations would cease. Would you take your revenge? Or would you let the water flow under the bridge? Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, it's Jose here again, welcoming you to another episode of Amazing Worlds, where today I'm going to be perhaps introducing you to, or perhaps reviewing for you, A Hundred Bullets by Brian Azzarello and Eduardo Risser. So, here it is, Volume 1 of A Hundred Bullets. Uh, this is the Trek Paperback Collection, uh, it's 13 volumes. The original series run for 100 issues, 100 bullets. Fantastic, like we did, what they did there. I had the absolute fortune of meeting Azzarello. I met him actually uh, a number of times at different comic cons and stuff like that. Um, but um, he was very kind and he signed for me uh, more than one, as you can see there, sort of dedicated. Absolutely a great guy because um, at the con I met him. Uh, he was only allowed to sign two books per person and, and I was there with like three of them and I hate the Spanish publishers of um, the Vertigo comics, I really can't stand them the way they organize things. Um, but anyway, so I went there and you know I said, you know, I've got this, I've got that. And I said, look, I've got this other comic here, um, it was the Before Watchmen uh, series uh, which he wrote uh, a number of them and it was already it had already been signed by the artist by Lee Vermejo I said to him look you know I've got it signed by Lee as well it would be really great if you could sign it and he was saying yeah sure give it to me you know the lady in the queue was looking at me annoyed and after all the top guy just uh, dedicated to me signed it top guy so Brian Azzarello uh, American uh, writer fantastic uh, this is my favorite work of his, but he's also done some very interesting stuff with uh, Batman, with Batman Damned, which you can check my intro or essential reading guide to Batman. He's also done some work uh, for Wonder Woman. He did a one-off Joker um, comic, which I've got there. I may get around to reviewing it someday. Um, An Argentinian artist, Eduardo Riso, who started in his native country, then he broke into Europe and eventually uh, he broke into the US and he now also works for DC in several um, lines there. That is the premise of A Hundred Bullets. Uh, a mysterious person, Agent Grace, goes round town approaching people, showing them hard evidence, photos, documents, to different people, that all the evil that has befallen them, the reason they are down on the lack, uh, who killed their loved ones, um, all the kind of really dirty, horrible stuff that you could think could happen to someone, he's got proof of that. And he also gives them a briefcase, a hundred untraceable bullets, guaranteed. As soon as the caskets are found, the police will stop any investigations, will never be connected to you. What will happen? What would you do? What would these different people do? So we follow Agent Greaves as he's going around, and the first few issues run along those lines, and some people do take their revenge, and some people do not, and it explores the psychology behind those decisions, and it is quite interesting. But this wouldn't run for a hundred issues if this was just a revenge tale of the month. So, as we read on, as we get more involved in the story, the plot thickens. Turns out, most of these people who are offered a chance at revenge are connected somehow in the past, their lives intertwined. 
and over the story develops um, an overarching plot um, which I, I felt a little bit disappointed by um, but effectively there is this uh, kind of secret society underground society of the wealthy rich families of the US that control you know very Illuminati type thing and, and they've got this group of trained killers um, who they use to you know for their nefarious ends that thing and Agent Graves being the leader of those trained killers um, which at some point got disbanded and he's trying to put the team back together again for one last hurrah type thing no, I uh, that that premise is kind of a little bit cliched. This whole people behind curtains controlling the destinies of the world type thing. So I think once we got towards the back end of the story, I felt a little bit like meh. But the beginning bit, the build up to it, I think is really really uh, great. It's really good. Uh, there are some really fantastic uh, characters created in the series. Um, one of them, uh, Lono, got his own mini-series, a spin-off sequel type thing there, which is not essential to read, to enjoy A Hundred Bullets. Um, so I think for me the story goes from good to really good to a bit of a letdown, but hey-ho, that's, that's that. I mean, fair is fair. Uh, a Hundred Bullets won the Eisner Award, which is like the Oscars for comics for Best Ongoing Series and we won also a Harvey Award which is another comics award for uh, I think Best Art as well and, and so you know it was um, pretty highly regarded um, definitely very much a, a vertigo label story very sort of quintessential uh, it's got a lot of kudos for Brian Asero from there he went on to write um, for Batman, and uh, he collaborated with Frank Miller in The Dark Knight 3, which, whatever. Um, so he's done some great stuff on the back of the strength of, of 100 bullets. Um, so credit where it's due. Now, my feeling on the art, um, as I was uh, reading it, is that I wished the art was a bit it was a bit rougher, it was a little bit dirtier, it was a little bit greetier. I don't know how to explain that, but maybe with with the, with the very sort of crime, black, noir-driven um, theme of the story, I wish that the art matched that a little bit better. So perhaps something along the lines of um, Gera, which I talked about in my review of this cult comic, or maybe some of the work that um, um, that you see in the Hellblazer series, I think uh, I think some of the stuff that Sean Phillips did for Hellblazer would have looked really good uh, here uh, in a hundred bullets. But obviously, who am I to criticize? What do I know? And um, Eduardo Rizzo, uh, very very talented, but some some of the art to me is a little bit. Cartoony, like I said, um, reminds me in places a little bit of um, tin cell, perhaps, with, with the use of um, dark and light and and shades. Um, I think again, the the the, the very the coloring is very clear, it's very neat. Um, but, so th that's why. I think there's something a little bit dirtier it would have been would have been better, um, but um, I it doesn't detract it doesn't detract from the story and, and maybe perhaps if they had done it a little bit rougher um, a little bit more um, like I said a little bit dirty um, maybe the series would have been a bit too a bit too much it would have gone too far the the way of being really adult really much more for grown-ups um, perhaps I don't know 
you know, very, as I said, it's very clean lines, um, a bit sparse uh, in terms of the backgrounds, uh, so you don't get that much detail in the in the panels, uh, just the main figures um, and little else a lot of the time. And, and sometimes uh, a lot of playing with the light and, and dark and a sort of half completed figures and letting your mind uh, finish off um, the image a bit like Frank Miller did with Sin City. I think Frank Miller set precedent with, with that and, and some people have taken bits of it and I think you, you can see those things here in, in 100 bullets. Um, the characters are, <laughs> uh, they're bastards, all, all, all these people are, are, are bastards, no, no, nobody, there's no one nice. All these people are bastards, these characters are not nice people at all, I mean they are trained killers, the stuff they get up to, the things they do to each other, the way they treat each other is absolutely terrible. But you can't help but sort of like them and, and get dragged into it and be sucked into it and, and follow them because that's the, that's the power of the storytelling and that's the power of how good the writing is um, and that's credits to credit and that's credit to Azarello. Um naturally there. Um, the ending, I don't know, I don't know what to make about the ending. It's, a little, it's certainly cathartic, to say the least, um, and I suppose uh, looking at the story, it couldn't have, it couldn't have finished any other way. Uh, was that the ending that I wanted? I'm not sure. But the story being what it is, um, I, I think I, I should have been surprised. It should have surprised anyone. It couldn't finish any other way. But how does it finish? I leave that to you to, to read, figure out. Um, but um, definitely very, very enjoyable. And um, he, he led on to that team of Azarella and Riso. Um, they collaborated again uh, a few years later when they started for Image Comics the Moonshine series, which unfortunately being Image just got stopped. Who knows when they're going to finish, but I would like to see that uh, continued there. Um, great, great, great. Um, endorsement from key writers uh, in, and, and illustrators in comics. I mean, you just look at the back of volume one, you know, Warren Ellis, Garth Ennis, Greg Rucker, Dave Gibbons, Steve Dillon, you know, all these people giving it praise and, you know, rightly so. It's, um, it's definitely merited. It's def so in summary, that is it. That is 100 Bullets, a hard-hitting crime drama with a splash of the Illuminati uh, conspiracy theory type thing thrown in um, to wrap everything up. Um, it is violent, it is gritty, it is dirty but not as much perhaps as Sculpt um, may have been. Not necessarily a believable story uh, in that sense. Apparently there's been talks of a movie happening around that 100 bullets um, idea thing with, with Tom Hardy. Uh, love Tom Hardy as an actor uh, in, in a producing role, maybe acting, who knows. So that would be great uh, to see happen, as I keep saying in this channel. I think some of the best writing of the last few years and presently is happening in comics, not in television, not in, not in film. But there you have it. Anyway, so that's, that's it. Just going to wrap it up here. Uh, thank you very much watching please 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 like subscribe subscribe um comment let me know what you think give it a like drop me a line is this something that would intrigue you um is this something that you would have considered before or did, did you come from comics as superheroes and this is all news to you or maybe you come from a different school where you saw comics more or as a storytelling media storytelling device that doesn't necessarily have to fall into, um, you know, the Marvel DC superhero type thing. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. Please, please, please stay calm, stay safe. Finally, tomorrow for the first time in six weeks, I'm allowed to take the boys out for one hour. 
within one kilometer of the house, so I'm really looking forward to taking the boys out for a bit of a walk, a bit of fresh air. Um, it looks like we come in the other side of this thing, so I'm excited, I'm happy. Please stay safe, um, stay positive, take care, see you next time. Bye.